In the past, video production was expensive and required a significant investment in equipment to have high quality results. That's simply not the case anymore. And today, we're gonna to give you a chance to compare two HD cameras, both that retail at similar prices. Now the first camera is the Flip Minnow Video Camcorder. The Flip was really the first of its kind, a camera with a built-in USB connection that allows you to shoot your footage, flip out the USB, and plug it right into your computer. From there, you have the option to transfer the video to your hard drive or even upload it directly to YouTube. Now the second camera we'll be looking at is the Kodak ZI8. And just like the Flip, the ZI8 has a built-in USB plug allowing for easy transfer to your computer or the internet. And both cameras offer high definition quality and a compact size, allowing you to capture high quality video virtually anywhere. Now the cameras are so similar in fact that choosing between the two of them is pretty difficult. So today we're going to test both cameras and hopefully make that decision much easier. Now let's head over to our editing lab and take a closer look at each of them. When it comes to comparing two cameras, the most important feature you want to focus on is video quality. Because who cares what the camera looks like if the video quality sucks? Right off the bat, it would appear as though the ZI8 has the flip camera beat. Because in addition to shooting at the same 720p quality, the ZI8 also gives you the option to shoot at full 1080p resolution. Let's take a look at some of the test footage we shot earlier today and see how the quality really compares. First, let's look at some footage of a chart designed to show just how sharp each of the cameras really is. When looking at the two side by side, it's clear that despite only being able to shoot at 720p, the flip actually looks a lot sharper. But forget about test charts, how do, they do, how do the two cameras handle ordinary objects under studio lighting? Here you can see that once again the flip is sharper, but the color saturation is not quite as vivid as the ZI8. The flip also shows less contrast, preserving more detail in the darker parts of the image, but giving it a much duller look overall. It's important to note, however, that even the most basic video editing programs have the ability to increase the contrast and saturation, improving the look of the flip footage. So, based on these tests, it would seem as though the flip camera is the better choice, and if you're sitting at home in your movie studio under your expensive production lights, then by all means, stop watching this and go out and buy one. But the truth is, most people using these cameras will be doing so out in the real world, where lighting will be limited to what is available. So let's go back to the studio and see how these cameras perform in a more practical environment. Now, we're going to look at two video clips shot simultaneously on both cameras outside of our studio. Starting with the flip, you'll notice almost immediately that the footage has an overall bluish tint to it. Now this bluish tint, which by now has gone away, is due to the flip being a bit slower adjusting the white balance to the change in color temperatures. Otherwise the results are almost the same as those experienced in the studio. The ZI8 footage, on the other hand, shows significant improvement. The colors and contrast both still look great, but this time the overall image is much sharper. Now when you compare stills from both videos side by side, you'll see that now it's the ZI8 that wins the sharpness contest, especially when you focus on the grassy area in the bottom left of the screen. This difference is due to the focusing limitations of the lenses in both cameras. The flip does a better job at focusing on objects that are closer, like the tests done in the studio, while the ZI8 does better with subjects that are a bit further away. In this footage shot under available light indoors, the ZI8 once again comes out on top. Now let's look at how easy these cameras are to use. The Flip is probably the easiest camera on the market. All you have to do is take it out of the box, turn it on, and hit the big red record button on the back. One of the first things you may notice about our version of the Flip is the custom graphics on the exterior. Flip allows its customers to make their own designs which can be printed directly onto the camera shell, so no more dealing with messy stickers that are impossible to put on straight and peel off in like a week. Looking at the back of the camera, you'll see that the buttons are limited. Aside from controls allowing you to record and play back, there's not really much else there. This is great if you're not very tech savvy and want a camera that can do all the thinking for you, but the only downside is, if you don't agree with what the camera thinks about how the video should look, there's really not much you can do to change its mind. Now I'm sure you're probably also wondering how you're supposed to shoot on a camera with no video screen, but actually if you look, you know what, there is a screen on the camera, it's just really, really, really small. Now once you're done recording your Oscar worthy performance, how do you get the footage off the camera? Well, with a simple flip of a switch, out pops a USB connector, allowing you to easily connect it to any computer. From there, simply drag and drop your video files to wherever you'd like to save them, and you're done. 
It's that simple. The camera also includes a video output for playing footage back on your TV, but only in standard definition, and is capable of mounting on a tripod, although in a pinch, it can just as easily stand up by itself. Now, how does all that compare to the ZI8? Well, let's go back to the studio and find out. Now, just like the Flip, the ZI8 is incredibly easy to use, and it's ready to go right out of the box. That is, if all you plan on shooting is about two minutes of footage. Beyond that, you'll need to buy a memory card, and we recommend getting at least an 8 gig, which will last you over an hour. Now, the back of the ZI8 has a lot of the same controls as the Flip, including a bright red record button. One obvious addition is the presence of a menu button. This gives more advanced users the option to make adjustments to the recording volumes and image brightness as well as other settings, allowing for more fine-tuned control of the overall image quality. Unlike the Flip, the ZI8 features a large screen that doesn't require superhuman vision to actually see. It also has a similar built-in USB connector, allowing for easy connection to the computer. In addition to a standard definition video output, the ZI8 also has an HDMI output, allowing you to view your videos in high definition on any HDTV using the included cable. The camera doesn't stand up on its own, but it can be mounted to a tripod and has an electronic image stabilization for smoother handheld use. Now aside from the quality of the cameras, one factor that is usually key is the price. We recently checked the website of one of the leading electronics retailers and found that the ZI8 sells for $180 while the Flip, which is usually about $230, is currently on sale for $183. Now, for legal reasons, we can't tell you exactly which site we got these prices from, but let's just say it's one of the best places to buy your electronics. So in the end, both cameras have their advantages and disadvantages, but based on the overall quality, it's the Kodak ZI8 that comes out on top. For everyday use, the ZI8 produces a sharper, more colorful image than the Flip, and a retail price is actually cheaper. Now I'm sure that there are those of you out there who have already purchased the Flip, and you're like, what should I do now? Well, rest assured, the, the Flip still produces an excellent image, and most of the areas where the Flip falls short is easily corrected in just a little bit of post-production work. So if you don't already have one, then the Kodak is the way to go. But if you already have the flip, there's no need to turn it into a paperweight. It's really not heavy enough for that anyway.